It began with a faint glimmer, August 6, 2025. A moment so small it almost went unnoticed, yet it changed everything. Inside NASA's Deep Space Command Center, a routine scan from the James Webb Space Telescope triggered an anomaly alert. At first, no one understood what they were looking at. The data wasn't from a distant galaxy or collapsing star, it was from within our own solar system. Webb had automatically entered emergency override mode, something reserved only for the rarest cosmic events. But this time, it wasn't reacting to a supernova or a dying star. It was responding to a visitor. The object was designated 3I Atlas, classified as a comet, a supposed interstellar wanderer drifting in from another star system. Cold, predictable, harmless. But when Webb's instruments locked on, the information pouring down from deep space didn't look like any comet ever recorded. It wasn't just strange, it was impossible. The chemistry was grotesque, the behavior erratic, the structure defying every known model. And as scientists watched the feed, a quiet unease began to grow. What if this wasn't a comet at all? What if it was sent? At six astronomical units from the sun, any normal comet should have been asleep, frozen solid and dormant. Yet 3I Atlas was already awake, violently awake. Webb spectrographs showed a chemical makeup no one had ever seen. Instead of water vapor, its coma was dominated by carbon dioxide, eight times more abundant than water. An eight, one ratio, the highest ever measured. Ordinary comets barely reach 0 0.7. Even Borisov, our last interstellar visitor, was about 0 0.5. But 3I Atlas was something else entirely, as though it had been built from carbon dioxide itself. And the coma wasn't chaotic. It wasn't spewing random dust or fragments the way normal comets do. It was smooth, stable, almost controlled, gas emissions flowing in symmetrical layers as if guided by design. Then came the metallic signature. Nickel lines began to appear strong, sharp, and consistent across the ultraviolet spectrum. Not traces, not background noise, but clear, deliberate signals. Yet the strangest part was what Webb saw, it was what it didn't. There was no iron. None at all. In every meteorite, asteroid, and comet ever analyzed, nickel and iron appear together. They're born as twins inside stars and bonded forever by physics itself. To separate them takes unimaginable energy, machinery, not nature. But here was 3I Atlas, drifting silently through the void, defying those rules. For the first time, the universe looked less like random chaos and more like deliberate architecture. Then came the motion. Over a span of 72 hours, tracking stations observed the object accelerating. Not from sunlight, not from gas jets, it was far too cold for that. And yet its velocity rose by 0.12 meters per second squared, a measurable push as though something within it had come alive. But this acceleration wasn't random. It came in pulses. Every 7.2 hours, the comet brightened and sped up, then stabilized again. A heartbeat in orbit. A rhythm no natural body should have. Webb's light curve confirmed it. The brightness wasn't chaotic tumbling but precise repetition. Each flash looked like a rotating facet reflecting sunlight, a lighthouse sweeping its beam through space. Scientists argued whether it could be an optical illusion, but the numbers didn't lie. 3I Atlas was behaving like a mechanism. At 2.11 GMT, the emergency alert went out. CO2 reading spiking, metallic emissions surging, acceleration breaching expected gravitational limits. The order followed, override web. It's a command rarely issued, one that halts every planned observation and redirects the telescope's focus entirely. The override burns fuel, disrupts months of scheduling and requires unanimous approval. Within minutes, the answer was yes. Webb pivoted toward 3I Atlas. What it captured wasn't just data, it was revelation. No ice, no dust, no trace of water, just violent carbon chemistry and metallic vapor structured and repeating in frequency, ratios that match no known process. The nickel to iron ratio was 40 to one, something that can only be achieved in an industrial furnace. But this wasn't a machine built by us. 
It was already there, orbiting between the planets, shining like a mirror of impossible design. Then a researcher noticed something buried in the spectral noise. The light wasn't random, it was organized. When converted into sound, it produced a repeating pattern of prime numbers and Fibonacci intervals. It wasn't a message, not in words, but in structure, a mathematical rhythm written into photons themselves, a signature of intent. Within days, magnetometers across Earth began picking up ultra-low frequency pulses every 7.2 hours, perfectly synchronized with 3 I Atlas's rhythm. But the pulses weren't from space. They came from beneath Earth's crust. The planet itself was resonating, as though something deep underground recognized the frequency. Records showed faint echoes of the same signal during Taumuamua's passage in 2017. Now, it was louder. Whatever 3i Atlas was doing, the Earth was responding. When astronomers plotted its trajectory, the final illusion shattered. 3i Atlas wasn't falling helplessly toward the Sun. It was navigating, threading its way through gravitational wells like a spacecraft performing precision slingshot maneuvers. Simulations revealed a 92.6% match with engineered trajectories used in interplanetary probes. It wasn't being pulled by gravity, it was using it. Then as suddenly as it had awakened, it went silent. Nickel lines vanished, carbon emissions dropped, the seven-hour rhythm flattened. Every telescope reported the same thing. 3i Atlas had gone dark. It didn't fade, it shut down like a machine powering off after completing its task. But the story didn't end there. New orbital models revealed a deviation. The object was no longer leaving the solar system. It had changed course, turning inward toward the region between Earth and Venus. The same corridor where satellites had been reporting strange signal interference for weeks. Coincidence or purpose? Meanwhile, an AI at MIT trained on Webb's data made another discovery. When mapped across time, the emissions of nickel and carbon dioxide formed a perfect geometric helix, a structure eerily similar to the double spiral of early RNA molecules. Not life, not consciousness, but design. As if 3i Atlas wasn't communicating with us but broadcasting the recipe for life itself, a code written in light and chemistry drifting between worlds. Two weeks later, deep space radar experiments bounced a signal off the moon. The echo returned early, zero, 23 seconds ahead of prediction. Inside, it was a faint pulse, repeating every 7.2 hours. The same rhythm. Lunar records showed the same anomaly during Taumuamua's passage eight years earlier. Something beneath the moon's surface had heard this before. Now, it was answering. Days later, as Webb returned to normal operations, distant quasars began to flicker in unison. Seven pulses silence, then seven more, each aligned along the same path 3i Atlas was traveling. Not a coincidence. A chain. A network. A relay stretching across light years. 3i Atlas wasn't an isolated event. It was part of a system, a program running quietly across the galaxy. If it's natural, then nature is operating at a level of structure and precision beyond our comprehension. If it's engineered, then we've just witnessed a machine older than our civilization, maybe older than Earth itself. It may not have been sent to communicate with us. It may have come to reactivate something dormant, something buried deep within our own system. Now it's silent. The pulse is gone. The nickel lines have faded, but maybe that's the point. Maybe the signal wasn't for us to decode, it was for something else to hear. A trigger, not a conversation. A key, not a message. And the most chilling part, silence doesn't mean it's over. Silence could mean it's done. Because sometimes, the universe doesn't send warnings. It sends instructions. And once they're executed, everything else just waits. <laughs>